In today's video, we're going to continue our prospect report series where we're covering all 31 NHL teams, completing an in-depth analysis of their top prospects, as well as summarizing all the players they selected at the 2018 NHL Draft. Today's team we're focusing on is the New York Rangers, and that's coming up next. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, we're continuing our prospect report series today and focusing on the New York Rangers. Now they have a lot of very interesting prospects I want to discuss today. We're looking at three defensemen, three forwards, and a potential goalie of the future. So let's jump in here. Now let's get started with a couple of defensemen that were more than likely going to see a fair bit on the NHL roster this year. They had a chance to, to get some time in last year and I fully suspect them to continue that here in the 18-19 season. Let's get started here with Anthony D'Angelo. Now obviously D'Angelo was a player who wasn't drafted by the Rangers. He was acquired from the Coyotes during the Derek Stepan anti Ranta trade a couple seasons back here. Uh, this is his third NHL team that he's actually with. He was actually a Tampa Bay Lightning draft choice a few years ago. D'Angelo is a very mobile, puck-moving, right-shot defenseman who has the potential to be a top 4D. The main drawback on him is a little bit of character issue. Maybe it's some temperament, needs to do some growing up and maturing still. He's been suspended on multiple occasions in different leagues, um, a couple times for abuse of officials. So obviously there is some growth there uh, on the personal side of the game, uh, but hopefully the Rangers can help him overcome that and move past it. Uh, he did split the season last year a fair bit between the NHL and the AHL. Didn't look too bad uh, from you know when he was able to keep his game clean on the ice. Uh, so hopefully the Rangers can help him continue to develop here and get some more time into NHL level this season. The next defenseman I want to talk about with the Rangers here is Neil Pionk. Now Pionk had some time in the NHL last year. He was also not a Rangers draft choice. He was an NCAA player who went undrafted and signed with the New York Rangers as a free agent. Neil Pionk's a strong skating right shot defenseman with a great shot. He has a good one-timer from the point. Uh, he's a very good compete level, tries hard, works hard every shift, so he's got good character as well. Uh, so Pionk got into 28 games with the Rangers last year, put up 14 points, didn't look too shabby back there. Considering what the Rangers are going through a rebuild right now, I fully suspect Pionk to get an increased opportunity at the NHL level this season. Uh, so there's a couple of players here that they were able to acquire uh, that they didn't have to draft here to get into their system and then possibly be top six defensemen. So they've actually done a pretty good job that way between acquiring young talent as well as signing some undrafted free agents from the NCAA. Now the third defenseman I want to talk about today for the New York Rangers is again another defenseman that they did not draft. Actually they have a good trend here of acquiring some pretty good young talent. That's Libor Hayek who's originally drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was acquired from the Lightning during the big Ryan McDonough trade that we saw this past season at the NHL trade deadline. Now obviously Hayek's a pretty good sized player, 6'2", 200 pounds. Played this past season in the WHL, uh, was you know known to be a rougher type league, a lot of grit in that league as well, uh, and he is no a stranger to the gritty type of game. So he can certainly play a big physical game, but he's not shy on the offensive side of the game either. Has a pretty good offensive upside. Hayek had an opportunity to play for the Czech Republic this past year at the World Junior Championships. Looked pretty impressive. Played in eight games, put up seven points. Uh, but he's also a good defender. Really pretty decent on both sides of the ice here. Like I said, uh, you know, he not only can put up the offense, but he can play that good defensive, gritty type game as well. His skating is decent, but still something he's working on. Uh, so Hayek, I would say he's a weak skater. Uh, kind of average, but something that he's focusing on to really improve his mobility at the NHL level. With where Hayek is with his development, I would fully suspect he more likely get some more seasoning at the American Hockey League level. Now let's jump over and take a look at some of the forwards here. Now the first one I want to talk about is Ty Ronning. Now Ronning was a seventh round choice back in 2016. Obviously you don't see too many players selected that late in the draft become NHL players. Now Ronning is the son of former NHL player Cliff Ronning. He's kind of built like his father, smaller in stature, but plays really hard, has really good speed, and is a very, very offensively talented player. Played this past season in the WHL and put up a tremendous showing. Ronnie ended up playing 70 games in the WHL this past season, putting up 84 points. So with those types of totals, you can tell Ronnie is certainly a very offensive player, really smart, good hockey sense, good hockey IQ, uh, good offensive instincts. And I fully suspect Ronnie to get started with his pro career this year, more than likely playing uh, most of the season in the AHL 
Wouldn't be surprised to see him get a call up or a later into the year, depending on how the Rangers do for injuries or whatnot. But Ronning is certainly an exciting player to keep your eye on here for the New York Rangers here in the future. Now, before we jump into the other top two forwards here, I want to take a second and talk about their likely goaltender of the future, and that is Igor Shostorkin, uh, playing over in the KHL right now. Now, he's likely not coming over to the NHL for at least one more year, but he very well could, at some point here, be the heir apparent to Henrik Lundqvist uh, with the Rangers' goalkeeping situation. Now, Shostorkin's KHL numbers are very, very impressive. He's been an all-star over that league for the past two seasons. Shostorkin's been playing amazing over in the KHL. Looks like he's really going to be a solid NHL goalie when he finally makes the jump over here. Uh, let's take a look here at his career numbers over in the KHL. They're absolutely astonishing. He has a record of 56, 10, and 12 with a 1.81 goals against average and a 9.26 save percentage, including 15 shutouts. I mean, that is simply amazing. Now, mind you, he's been playing on some strong teams. But still, those are very, very, very impressive numbers. Uh, obviously, Shostorkin was a 2014 draft selection, and the Rangers are still working on bringing him over. But like I said, his contract with the KHL runs out after this year. So next year should be, hopefully, the year he comes over to North America. Now, Shostorkin does draw some comparisons in his game to Henrik Lundqvist. I mean, he's got tremendous lateral movements. He's got a very quick glove. Uh, the guy really looks like he's going to be a solid NHL goalkeeper here for many years to come. If he can come over and still play with Lundqvist for a year or two uh, before Henrik uh, calls it a career here, I think that would be great for his development to have him mentor him as well and prepare him to take over the net here in a few years' time. Now let's jump over to the top two forwards I want to discuss for the Rangers today. Now obviously both these guys I'm sure are players you're familiar with if you're a Rangers fan. If you likely remember, not only this year but last year as well, the Rangers have had multiple first round picks and they've made pretty good use of them. Last year's prospects are looking pretty solid and are likely going to be an opportunity here to play a pretty decent role for the NHL club this season. Now let's get started with their second of the first round picks last year and that is Philip Hedl of the Czech Republic. He played this past year mostly in the American Hockey League, but he did get a little bit of time at the NHL level as well. He's a very, very offensively talented center iceman, and I fully suspect him to get a big opportunity with the Rangers this coming season. At the American Hockey League level, he got into 46 games and put up 31 points. He played nine NHL games and put up three points. So, you know, obviously it would take a bit of an adjustment there to make the jump to the pro level. But he didn't look out of place at all. I thought he looked really solid. Uh, he had a chance to play for the World Junior Championships for the Czech Republic this past year as well. Also had a phenomenal tournament as well. So I really think he's a real deal here. He's got tremendous offensive talents. Uh, certainly projects to be a top six forward for sure. Uh, so the Rangers have a real solid top six forward potential here with Philip Hedl. Now let's jump over to the last forward we want to look at today and that's who I consider to be their best prospect and that's Leas Anderson. Obviously he's a, a Swedish hockey player. He was a captain of Team Sweden this past year at the World Junior Championships. If you're not familiar with him you might remember him. He was the captain of Sweden who after losing the gold medal game threw his medal into the crowd. It's something he's kind of become infamous for but really something that he really should overlook. Uh, he's a really good leader on the ice. His teammates love him. His coaches have a lot of respect for how he plays. Uh, the fact that he threw his medal into the crowd got a very, you know, quite a negative reaction from a lot of fans. Uh, but considering their age and everything, you really need to cut them some slack on that. Uh, he does show a lot of tremendous leadership, and it just shows to me how badly he wants to win. Now, this past season, Anderson had a chance to play in multiple leagues. Started his year in the SHL over in Sweden. Uh, had a chance to play for part of the year at the uh, AHL level for the Hartford Wolfpack. And then he did get into a few NHL games as well. But Anderson did have a pretty strong year for his development, playing in all three of those leagues. Putting up pretty decent po point totals in each one. Uh, I think Anderson has the potential to become a future captain here for the New York Rangers. Obviously, as we know right now, the Rangers are without a captain. They traded Ryan McDonough. I'm not going to sit here and say that Anderson should be their captain here uh, you know, next season or anything like that. I think it's a little early to put that label on him. Um, but depending on what they do for a captain, I can certainly see him being t captain type material here. I mean, uh, in a younger age, maybe in two or three years time. We see a lot of NHL younger players able to take on that role. And with his leadership abilities, I think that's something that he likely uh, would fit well with. I don't see Elias Anderson being a top line offensive weapon here. I mean, he does have some offensive abilities, but I see him being more of a second to third line type of player uh, who can obviously play the offensive game and play a very responsible, solid two-way game as well, be a great leader for the team and certainly have lots of value. Uh, so I can see him being a long time New York Ranger. And like I said, I think he has potential to be a captain here in the future for this club. Now let's jump over here and take a look at the 2018 summary for all the players that they selected here at the NHL draft. Uh, the Rangers went into this draft with three first round selections. 
There was some speculation they may use one or more to possibly trade for NHL caliber players, maybe move up in the draft or whatnot, but we really didn't see any of that at all. They still left the draft with three first round selections uh, and a lot of players now part of the Rangers organization. So I'm gonna put a full graphic here on the screen with a summary of their players and we'll talk through all the selections. Now the Rangers first selection at number nine overall, they kind of raised some eyebrows with this pick, but hopefully it works out for them. They selected from the KHL Vitaly Kravtsov. Now a lot of prospect ranking systems, myself included, actually had Kravtsov ranked somewhere between 20 and 25. I've even seen some of them rank a little bit lower, but a lot of people thought he could be a little bit of a wild card and a team higher up in the draft might take a chance on him. And that actually did happen here with the Rangers. Uh, so obviously he has the potential to be a very offensive player. So time will tell, hopefully that pick works out for the Rangers. With their second first round selection, number 22, this pick was a really solid pick, I think. Uh, they took a defenseman from the US National Development Program, K. Andre Miller. K. Andre Miller is likely gonna be probably two to three years away from in the NHL, but it's still a very solid selection. I think he has a high potential to be a really solid defenseman down the road. Their third and final first round selection, they selected another defenseman on the Sweden, and that's Nils Lundqvist. In the second round, number 39 overall, they took a goaltender. This was also a little bit of a surprise selection. They took Olaf Lindbaum out of Sweden as well. Um, there was a, a handful of goalies ranked higher than him uh, by many prospect ranking systems, but we'll see. Obviously, the Rangers have a track record of selecting great goaltenders out of Sweden. In, um, all, Lundqvist, for example, was a much later round pick uh, than Lindbaum here, but still, they do have a track record of finding great talent out of Sweden in the net. Their third round selection, number 70th overall, they took Jacob Ragnarsson, who's another defenseman out of Sweden. They had another third round pick, number 88 overall, where they selected another defenseman of the OHL, Barry Colts, Joey Keane. They took another defenseman in the fourth round, 101st overall, Nico Gross. In the fifth round, number 132nd overall, they took a right winger from Finland, Lori Paju Niemi. In the sixth round, they took another Swedish defenseman. I certainly see a trend here. They took a lot of defensemen this year. Uh, they took pick up Simon Shelberg, 163 overall. And their final pick in the seventh round, number 216, they took a right winger uh, from the United States, right winger Riley Hughes. So at this point in time, I'd say the New York Rangers have a pretty solid prospect system. I mean, some of the guys that we talked about today likely have a pretty big impact on this roster this year. I think Anderson, Hedl, uh, D'Angelo, Pionk for sure, likely all get some fairly significant time into NHL this year. So we'll see how they do. They have a potential goalie in the future as well in Shostorkin, and they really stocked the coverage this year by picking up a lot of extra draft choices with a lot of the moves they made at the NHL trade deadline. So over the last couple of years, the Rangers have had a lot of draft picks and so far a lot of them are looking pretty good. So overall, I think the future looks pretty bright for the Rangers. It's just a matter of getting these guys in their lineup, getting some NHL experience to see how high their ceiling can go. Now, I certainly want to hear from you down below in the comment section. So let me know what prospects you're most looking forward to getting into the NHL Rangers lineup here and what kind of impact you think they're going to have on this club moving forward. Now, if you're new to the channel here, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.